So it's a Saturday morning and I'm heading east out to Coatesville, Pennsylvania. I've been invited out here to watch them set up a Himalaya carnival ride and I'm gonna take them up on that offer. So when they take a carnival ride and they modify it to make it mobile, obviously space and weight are concerns. You wanna get everything as compact as possible, no wasted space. And this particular ride, I believe, does that uh, better than almost any other ride. This ride is manufactured by Wisdom and they managed to rack the entire Himalaya onto one trailer. The first step is to level the trailer. It needs to be level front to back and side to side. So once the trailer is leveled, then the deck supports can be added. Since the deck is designed to slope down, the manufacturer provides rails to set your level on. These compensate for the angle. All of the deck support pieces are stored in the belly of the trailer. This is a 53-foot trailer, and the ride comes in at just under 60,000 pounds. On the back side, the deck slopes up. This just shows a little detail how all the pieces of the ride are numbered so it's always assembled the same way. This is how the incoming three-phase power feed from the generator connects to the ride. Between the drive motor and the lighting, the ride consumes 63,000 watts of power. Perfect. The deck is lowered with hydraulic cylinders and the hydraulic pump is used several times throughout the setup process. All the tubs are attached to the deck and fold up with it for transportation. The front of the roof also folds out with hydraulic cylinders. These are just a few pieces of scenery that need to be removed for the roof to fold. Dang! Alright, almost. In the rear, the roof is much lighter and can just be folded out by hand. Once the rear deck and roof are extended, then they can finish extending the much heavier front roof. It actually folds out three times. When the roof is fully extended, it creates a 48-foot square. That's not the last trick the roof has, though. It also raises and lowers hydraulically. What you're seeing here is the biggest complaint about this ride. You have to move all the tubs twice, once to get them out of the way and again to install them.
but it does come with a built-in crane boom to do the job. I wanted to take a second to thank Jay and the crew from Majestic Midways for allowing me to come out and uh, document this process. After all the tubs and scenery are out of the way, then the sweeps can be installed. There's two pieces of track that need to be installed to bridge the trailer. With all the sweeps installed, the tubs are lowered over them and they're all connected together to form a continuous train. These light fixtures have an electrical connection, but they also have an air line running through them that connects to the tub to release the lap bars. The light bars are stored in a well under the sweeps. The final tub needs a little persuasion to complete the train. That's a zipper ride hiding there in the background, and we've done a setup video on that. I'll leave a link to it here in case you haven't seen it. Yeah. 
After the center crane boom is done doing its job, it's used to hold lights and scenery. These plastic blocks are installed underneath the ride through a trap door to lock the tubs to the sweeps. So I think I picked up a few ideas here that I can use on our ride restorations. I really like that expanded metal flooring. I think that'll work great on the floor for the rocket ride. And if you want to follow along with our projects, click that link to the left and come along for the ride.